We got a black hunter in today, and Josh plans to use this for bow fishing. Products of black hunter are made for Josh. We'll just put Josh there. Have not opened this box yet, so we're gonna take a look at it and see what shape this black hunter's in. Now, as we all know, who's ever had a black hunter, the strings are pure garbage. Ooh, Joshua, what did you do? I was expecting a black one. Did you order a special grip on this or just regular? That is probably the biggest grip I've ever seen on a black hunter. That thing is literally, look look how wide that thing is. That sucker is inch and three eighths. That is huge. Have you ever seen one that wide? I mean, it, it's not a bad feel. So it's cut about a 16th that way of center. If it was mine, I would fix that immediately. The finish on it is really not bad. Well, I might have spoke too soon. No, I'm gonna call the finish good, but right along this limb pad here, it's really rough. Pretty high radius on it, on the shelf, nice high radius. If you moved it back, you might be a slight more accurate, little bit more accurate if you moved it back to about right here. The radius on the side plate, just looking at this, is approximately, the high point is right there. We've looked at this pretty, pretty carefully. Overall, I'd be happy if I ordered this one. It's not that bad. What do we got here? I don't see just a lot of sharp edges. Of course, there's some, the tip is not very good. There's a cut in, I mean, it's not bad, honestly, but it's, there's a cut in right there. Actually, you can see it was most definitely rounded over with uh, some sort of CNC machine. That string groove needs to be a bit wider. I would um, chamfer these here holes. A lot of, if you don't chamfer these holes, that's where you get glass cracks. So here's the one with the specs. The Chinese writing's cool, I don't care who you are. It looks like they have, they, they should re reset their machine because same thing on here. There's a little cut out there and one there. All right, let's put it together quick. Maybe we should, we should trick out some black hunters specifically for bow fishing and offer them on the website a more economical bow fishing bow that you wouldn't be too worried about destroying. Well, I got it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Old Josh, always one, head, one step ahead of the game on everything. Pretty big old uh, limb bezel or bushing. Those are not as strong as the ones I use in my risers. I don't use those kind for my limb bolt inserts because these have, the threads on these are about three times, two or three times wider spaced than they are on the ones I use. If I was building this bow, I would have used the same color of, of, of the riser for the wedges. It's not bad. It would have just looked a little bit better. First, let's put both on just to make sure you've got the fading part of the wedge on the belly side of the limb. Just a different way of doing things. We do ours on the back side. The limb wedges could definitely handle being faded out a little thinner because it kind of stops right there and you can see there's just glue for the last quarter inch. Yeah, for smoothing this, those wedges need to flex. Okay, that freaks me out. I gotta look at something. I just barely snugged that up and I felt something. It could be just this insert seating itself further. Well, it's not moving. So I don't know what, I, what that feeling was. I felt it again. The limb fitment is once again fairly poor. Pretty good edge on here. Pretty good edge here. Doesn't really matter for a bow fishing bow. Oh, these strings are terrible. Hey, but you know what? If it gets people shooting bows, who cares, right? I hope that feeling I felt wasn't something bad because I'm fixing to string it. Okay, here I go. Boy, there's a lot of stretch in that string. We're seated. Is there any gaps? Yeah, with only 25 pounds. But I'll bet you anything, it was just that bushing that it was just twisting in a little further. All right. Now some of the most critical parts. The bottom limb is not perfectly straight, but it's straight enough that it would never ever cause you any trouble whatsoever. The top limb is perfectly straight. The tiller. Okay, so we have reverse tiller by a quarter inch. That's not good, but it possibly would be okay. I mean, for sure if it was your first boat, but it's definitely not gonna perform optimally with a quarter inch reverse tiller. It'll kill a fish. Well, let's go put it on the scale and see what she weighs. Man, they nailed it. It's dead on 25 at 28. Um, let's go back in there and talk just a little bit about the bow fishing setup. We've kind of checked it out. This one out of the box, you could hunt with it. You could fish with it. You could target archery with it. So Josh is using one of these. Now I'm gonna be the first to say that I don't have just a huge amount of experience bow fishing, mainly because of where I live. So just to show you guys how this works, this is your slide, and this is a safety slide. You shoot, 
it goes out and then when you reel in, you just grab this, pull this, that puts tension on and you roll your fish in. Like Nick was saying earlier today, after you're done fishing, you definitely want to dry this out because you'll get mold growing in there. But other than that, uh, these are, these are um, one of the little more expensive type of fishing reels. You can get the just the, just the round one. You just turn your bow sideways and then you wrap the string around the, the plate. If I went bow fishing a lot, I'd go for one of these, I believe. He's actually going to the lake this weekend, so I'm, he might give it a try. This was a kit right here somewhere, but then you got these here as add-ons. How much do these weigh? 1200? <laughs> Something like that, yeah. 12, 1500? Yeah, that goes in a carp. It ain't coming out. Look at that bad boy. I think he's going to go for finger savers, which actually is a pretty excellent idea for, for a bow fishing bow because you, your glove or tab isn't going to get all wet. So for a fishing bow, I mean, it's cool. Looks pretty good, you know, from a couple miles away. No, <laughs> no, it actually, it actually is not bad at all. I would cross the, cross the lake. It looks yeah. pretty good. I would bow fish with this with no problem. And you got a nice area too on these black hunters to put your uh, quickie quivers. I'm like, okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna mount this thing exactly vertical. So what we need for that, we need a straight edge. If you just take this here and get it to the point, go to the point of both of these, you want this thing centered. So half of inch and a half is three quarter. Man, you, you just did it freehand almost perfect. Now I'm double check myself from the other side. Always, always double check yourself when you're putting in quiver inserts. Okay, that's perfect. If I was doing this with a drill like I showed in the other quiver insert video, I would, uh, I would center punch those. You have to be concerned about where this um, limb bolt insert is. You're not going nearly that deep. But it's still not just a great idea to put a hole directly in line with a limb bolt insert you can weaken the grain structure around that. It's a lot better to offset it. We are offset. Yeah, we're down here, so we're okay. 3 eighths of an inch is gonna give us enough room to go in and just a little bit more. The last thing you want is to make a hole that's not quite deep enough, and then it doesn't go in, and then you're screwed. Hold on a second. That is not blue underneath. I'm just gonna go a little deeper. All right, that's perfect. That is a little bit disappointing. I thought that was a block of blue. It's not a block of blue. If you were to refinish it or reshape it or anything, you would instantly be into that blonde color. So that's a mark against it. I always do this, even though I've already got my mark. If my bit wandered at all or just a little bit, I'm gonna go ahead and measure to the center of this and see if I have an inch and 5 sixteenths. I'm still perfectly at an inch and 5 sixteenths. And here we go. And there you have it. 128th off, but it's gonna be fine. I'm not going to pound on anything hard, so we're gonna take it back into the office where we have carpet. Okay, I'm gonna put another one right there. Put this guy in here, make sure there's no dust in there. And then I want to get this as straight as possible before I hammer the first blow. So that's down all the way. I used a quarter inch. I would probably not use a quarter inch. That's what the instructions on that said. It's a little too tight. It kind of roughed up that insert face just a little more than I like. It's a little softer material than still, but sometimes that's worse. No, it doesn't make a difference. In fact, it's worse. So I would not drill the hole that big. I mean, that small. Did you measure a bit but drilled it? No, oh, I know it was a quarter. I didn't measure the bit, but it said quarter on the package. Some of these you can't trust. I always measure bit. I did break my rule. I'm looking at these now, and sometimes I do this purposely, where I, um, I flare this flange down so it makes it more low profile, and it did that on here. However, you can also see there's just a little bit of roughage that, of the force it took to hammer that in. I don't like that. Let's try it. See how perfectly aligned those are? That's what you're after. That works. Here we are, we're all set up, ready to go. I know y'all just got done seeing Josh's gigantic fish that he shot with it, so that's cool. We were looking at this, and like for me, it's a little bit far away. I think all a guy would have to do, I haven't done a lot of bow fishing, but you could just bend this out. You just don't want to get in the way of your arrow, but there's a little arrow holder here. This is really cool. So that works good. Tighten that up. There you have it, Black Hunter fishing reel quiver inserts. Thanks for watching.